Hey, beautiful souls, beautiful sunshine here with the R Holistic Killer, aka Sonya B. I am back for my three days taken off. I hope you guys received the other messages. Um, but today I have several messages that came through, and I just figured I would just wait till today to give them to you because I needed that time off. So, with that being said, um, let's get right in. Um, for those of you who do not know, I am here to translate messages from the spiritual world into this physical world um, through prophetic dream messages. Um, for those of you who do not know, I'm a clairvoyant Hayoka empath who receives divine prophetic dream messages. I also receive intuitive messages as well. Um, I also receive intuitive messages through music as well too. Uh, whether I'm hearing a message through the radio and God speaking to me in that way or whether I am just not even listening to the radio and God is just, you know, bringing certain um, songs and music to my attention. Um, and I'll say for this, uh, for this actual message, um, I don't know the artist who sing the songs, but I'll try to make sure I remember to put it in the description box below for those of you who've never heard the song, but I'm sure you have. It was a song back in the day. It wasn't too long ago, but it was some years back. Um, the song kind of goes like, and this is basically what God is saying. Um, I keep waiting 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 on the world to change so if you guys heard that song before you should go listen to it or click in the description box below and listen to the song because that's basically what god is trying to say so with that being said just understand when god has been waiting and he has been waiting and he has really been patient enough thank you spirit <laughs> he has been patient enough so i say all that to say that you know he will allow us the time um, during certain seasons is what I'm hearing. He will allow us the time in certain seasons to kind of like wander in the wilderness because what I'm hearing is like how um, the Israelites had wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, I think it was. I haven't read my Bible in so long, so <laughs> I, I don't even... I think it was 40 years. I don't think it was 30, but 40 years. Anyway, so the people wondering. So I say all that to say some of you guys have been wondering throughout different seasons, summer, spring, winter, fall, you know, whether it be four year, two years, three years, four years, 10 years, whatever the case may be, wandering in the same type of energies. It's almost like God is like, okay, enough is enough. So it's almost like we're coming into a new season that it's time for things to change. So with all that being said, let's get right into the message. Oh, and I just want to say for those of you who are new to my channel, I just want to say welcome. And for those of you who are returning back, I want to say welcome back. Keep in mind that these energies could be happening to you um, or it could be happening to someone, someone that is close to you or somebody who is, you know, just around you. You know, uh, your mom, your sister, your brother, your cousin, uh, a friend, um, a co-worker, your boss, you know, whoever, a stranger on the street. It doesn't matter. You know, a next door neighbor any of those people or it could be specifically happening to you but keep in mind that these energies could be happening right now and i know we're coming into these energies should i say so i say all that to say um it just depends on your location on the planet whether you're on the southern hemisphere the northern hemisphere and all of that plays a factor whether you're in the east coast west coast you know all of that plays a factor in when you will receive this energy but i say all that to say this month of october i'm october <laughs> october and i'm sorry for those of you who do not know if you this is your first time clicking on this video um i we are in mercury retrograde that actually started on friday i knew i was close i just didn't know when i just knew i was feeling the energies so we are in mercury retrograde and sometimes you will kind of hear me just stumbling over my words just a little bit that just happens to me when i'm in mercury retrograde so just excuse it we all got little flaws so unfortunately that's just mine i just take it and run with it and keep it moving um um, anyway so with all that being said um yes so anyway again let's get right into the messages so the first message was i received this one on the 29th i think that was i don't know if that was wednesday or thursday anyway never nevertheless i received this one on okay i think i told you guys about this one did I tell you guys about this one? Oh, God. Like, I had a few days off now. I forgot. Anyway, I'm going to just start here on the 29th. I heard an explosion of some kind going off. I'm not sure if this like a uh, actual... I don't know if I want to say a bomb or I don't know if I want to say an some sort of explosion. I, I don't know. I can't tell you. I didn't see it. 
All I know is I remember, excuse me, all I know is I remember hearing it and I duck down because I was just like, oh my God, like where'd that come from? So some of you guys are going to find yourself in a situation that something is going to totally catch you off guard. And I say out that to say whether it's an actual bomb itself, and I'm not here to put fear in anyone. I'm just here to just, you know, give you the message ahead of time. So that way you just be aware, not to walk in fear either, but just to be aware that um, just pay attention to your surroundings and just pay attention to what's coming in your train of thought. Because this could be either in your physical environment is what I'm hearing, spirit, say thank you, spirit. This could either be in your physical environment or this can be in your mental environment. And I say all that to say it's almost like, imagine like a, a bomb going off in your physical environment you know you, you're reactive you're like oh my god like where'd that come from where you know because i really felt the blow of the force of the energy um w which is what it kind of i don't want to say it jolted me a, a it jolted me enough to the point that i really you know ducked down should i say and i felt the impact of it so whether this is a physical situation for some of you or whether it's a mental uh mental or emotional situation for some of you it could just be the fact that the matter of it's going to be like a bomb or something aha moment something going off in your 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 train of thought and something's being brought to your awareness and it's almost going to be like a an explosion in a sense so take it how it resonates again i don't know in what shape or form but i'm just hearing spirit say for some it could be an actual bomb should i say and for others it could be actually just kind of like a, an explosive going off in their train of thought, in a sense, uh, their mind, their mental, emotional minds. Anyway, but whatever it is, it's going to put an impact on some of you in some way, in some shape or form. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. So just beware and be mindful. Um, again, I'm not here to put fear in it. It's just meant to give you the messages. So that way, when you're faced with a certain situation, you know how to basically, you already heard the message in advance. So it allows you to make a conscious choice of, okay, am I going to go right? Or am I going to go left? You know, doing what's best for you anyway. So let's move on. Um, Yeah, and then after, and then within that same dream, I just so happened that I looked up and I almost saw like a sacred, sacred, uh, sacred, oh God, sacred geometric uh, symbol up in the sky. But it was like, we already know the sky sometimes can have like the white clouds and be light blue, but this was like a gray. It was like. Uh, it was like gray and white. Gray and white. Hold on. So it was like a white and gray, but it was like kind of like in a, almost like the shape of the Pentagon, like the shape of a Pentagon, uh, which is so weird because now that I kind of think about it, but it wasn't in a building form, but it, anyway, it was in the sky. So whatever. So I'm not really sure, but pay attention to what's going on in the sky because obviously that has some sort of significance. Uh, again, it was like white and gray and it looked like, um, some sort of geometric type of um symbolism to it say uh geometry one of the two anyway so yeah i don't want to get lost in that but anyway so yeah pay attention to that too and um and i remember hearing um as a matter of fact i remember even in that dream i had looked up and then I saw the white and gray print in the sky, the geometric shape. And then I remember waking up saying that that's not God or whatever the case may be. So I know I did a video on be mindful to not drink the Kool-Aid. Um, excuse me, y'all, something in finding way. I did do a video on be mindful to not to drink the Kool-Aid. So I'm not sure if that has something to do with that or I'm not sure if that I'm not sure if that has something to do with that. Um, just being mindful of 
I'm not sure. Maybe somebody's saying, oh my God, that that's God doing that or... You know, just be mindful of that. Anyway, you have to use your spirit of discernment. You know, don't let others try to talk you into, uh, you know, what you may think it is. Because for every person, it may be something different. So keep that in mind as well, too. Anyway, for so this next message, God also told me it was very brief. He just basically said, um, He basically said, knowing who you are will help you to balance your chakras, in other words. So once you figure out who you are, in a sense, it's almost like it's going to help you to balance your chakras, in a sense. Like, just really knowing who you are. Um, and that was the only message that I received with that, so I'm going to leave that there. Because it's something about knowing who you are, it brings everything else into balance. Um, and then... In this dream, I dreamed about somebody that was a family member. So take it how it resonates for some of you guys. I dreamed about somebody that was a family member. And um, let's just say that this is someone in this... Someone who you haven't spoken to in a while because you felt like they had basically you know, disrespected you in some sort of way. It came up in a sense like... I'm not sure if this is probably maybe later down the road, but I saw in a dream that, you know, that uh, some of you guys may be going shopping with this individual. Keep that in mind. That could just be a message for a few. Anyway, so for this next dream, okay, bear me, bear with me with this one because this one took, uh, excuse me, y'all. It's a little nippy in here. This one took a whole lot of twists and turns, okay? So bear with me. Okay, so... In this dream, it came in a form as if it was myself and someone else. Uh, in a dream, it was myself and it was my spouse in a dream. And should I say, and it's like we were we were in the elevator for some particular reason. We, we started off in the elevator. We started off in the elevator. And as we was in the elevator, it's like, I could see, actually no, in this dream it was just my, I believe it was just myself because I was looking down down at these this two, two couples that was in the elevator. So it was two couples in the elevator and they was in there with somebody else. And these people were friends with uh, Snoop Dogg. I don't even know why he came into that equation or whatever, but it said that they, they were friends with Snoop Dogg in some sort of way. Apparently they work with Snoop Dogg's staff and I got the message like, uh, ouch. They work with Snoop Dogg's staff, and um, so they was in the elevator having a conversation, and they was excited because they was having a conversation. That actually, it was a man and a woman. They was having a conversation about doing this new project, so apparently for Snoop Dogg. So they was explaining to the other people who was inside the elevator with them, basically saying, yeah, you know, we've been working for Snoop Dogg for 14 years, and um that they had been working for him for 14 years and um basically take it how it resonates because you you the individual who knows their part and how they have been behaving you're going to know which one is you so whether it showed up as a woman or a man doing whatever part you take what take what resonates and and just because it was a woman doing a specific thing doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a woman who was acting this way like in real life uh in other words because remember we all have masculine and feminine energy so because it's a woman doing something it could be pertaining to this is also a male or a woman doing this having the same type of behavior so in the elevator basically what happened was uh, they was excited about this new project that they was about to do they was like yeah Snoop Dogg Dogg's about to open up a pawn shop so um, and then they was like, they knew that they were going to kind of manage and run this pawn shop because like I said, he, they work with his staff. And, um, so the, the guy had said, yeah, we've been working with him for like four. Was it the guy or the girl? Anyway, one of them had basically said, yeah, we've been working for him for 14 years. So I say all that to say. He had got excited by the fact that they had been working together for 14 years. So I don't know. 
for some particular reason i didn't catch this as i woke up from the dream but i want to say like a few days as a matter of fact as of yesterday i was like 14. does the number 14 sound significant in your life think about 14. 14 months 14 years 14 days whatever the case may be but not, not 14 days excuse me but 14 years plays a part so wherever 14 years fit at in your equation if something happened to you that it was 14 years this message is for you so i say all that to say for 14 years um they've been working for him and then he was very excited so he took and went to try to grab the lady's hand in other words to be like yeah we did this we we've, we've been working together for 14 years in other words for snoop doggy dog uh i know i'm jacking up his name or whatever for um snoop dog or whatever the case may be so he he wanted to just you know how somebody just grab your hand be like yeah yeah you know just like yeah you know like hold the hand up but in other words so he was excited to say that they have worked together for 14 years on snoop dog staff should i say but the lady on the other hand when he went to try to grab her hand her reaction and her response was like you know she basically didn't want him to touch her in other words so it's almost like in in what i the message i i had gotten from that was there was some sort of deep-rooted psychological issues that was there that was rooted deep down inside of her that didn't want her that didn't want him to touch her in any sort of way and just try to give recognition it's almost like she was pushing away the recognition and she was pushing away the 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 moment that he was trying to share with her and just saying like yeah good job you know we made it this far in a sense it's almost like she was just thank you spirit it's almost like she was just like um like again i knew that there was some sort of deep-rooted issues with you know her because she wasn't allowing something that would normally happen naturally you congratulate somebody when you reach the milestone in your life or a point in your life and to reach a milestone and not want to be congratulated that right there alone just show you that there was some sort of uh deep rooted issue with that uh issue but anyway so moving along then it's it, then the scene had switched and then it showed up in the dream like um myself as well as my spouse at this point in time so after leaving the people in the elevator talking about you know building um a pawn shop or whatever the snoop dog was gonna you know was gonna build a pawn shop so anyway so we were driving and some particular reason we stopped the car i got out he got out and my spouse was as if he was looking for something the spouse in the dream as if he was looking for something like you know how you take your hand and rub it down between the crack of the seats to you know the the seat the seat is like this and you're rubbing your hand down here in the crack that little crack just to um see if something had fell down there for some particular reason he got out of the car he was looking for something what he was looking for i don't exactly know but I, it got to me as the event started to unfold what exactly he was looking for. He realized that something was missing that he was looking for. So I walked over to the side of the seat and I started feeling myself too to see if, you know, if I could reach whatever it was that he couldn't reach. And then it just got to a point he just kept looking. So at that point, I just kind of walked away and I basically went to go do something else. So as I walked away... And went to go do something else i don't know exactly what it was but as i was coming back up on the car this time i had noticed that there was a gentleman who was came actually before i walked away a gentleman had walked up to the car and the gentleman was kind of saying hey you know can i help assist in in some sort of way so what happened was this guy came in like a uniform you know like how sometimes like this color you know how um mechanics show up in blue uniforms the pants and um the 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 shirt so this guy came up to the passenger side of the car and he had on like a mechanic uniform or whatever the case may be and i knew he was a mechanic so i say all that to say if you think about mechanics mechanics usually are there to fix something when something is either broken or needs to be put back in place something comes off you need an oil change you need new pads on the car brake pads on the car something's underneath your hood's not working you know if a bulb or a battery goes out or a light goes out in your car you know it needs to be fixed so you call a mechanic and the mechanic helps assist with that problem in order to put stuff back together so the mechanic was basically representing like uh it was like a form of like 
the Holy Spirit, it could be the angels, it could be a higher self, could be God, soul, spirit, you know, it could be the guardian angels, whoever, you know, it, it's going to be different for everybody. So I say that to say that that individual was showing up in the blue was a representation of somebody who was coming to assist spiritually. So anyway, so as I was walking back up on the car, I noticed that he was on the passenger side of the car and it's almost like he was like, oh, well, this is the problem right here. But need I remind you when it when when need I remind you when we were in the car, it was just myself and the spouse in the car at the time. But when I came back to the car, it's like the mechanic had found the problem. Thank you, spirit. <laughs> he just gave me revelation. Um, the mechanic had found what the problem was. So basically the mechanic had figured out it was a child, a baby that was in the back seat of the car in a sense because it's almost like you know but the car was like a convertible so i say all that to say um so the car wasn't enclosed it's like the convertible top was down and there was a baby in the back seat that i had no idea of but the mechanic remember that's what mechanics do they find out what the problem is and they fix it so the mechanic had saw that there was a, a child a baby should i say a baby in the back seat and as i walked back up on the car i didn't even know what he was doing because remember the seat was kind of flipped back so in other words i couldn't see what he was fooling with or messing with as i was walking back up on the car and then um as i got closer he told me so remember because i told you guys this for get ready he asked me, he said, are you ready? And I was looking like, uh, cause he was going to reveal to me exactly what it was. And I'm looking at him like, uh, okay, yeah. So then he revealed to me that it was a baby that had appeared. So the, apparently the baby had appeared in the car. So in other words, some of, some of you guys, uh, some of you guys, this is a situation of, some of your deep rooted pain, emotional issues, your emotional traumas um, are stemming from your childhood. It, it came in two different ways, stemming from your childhood. And then some of you guys, it's a situation of new beginnings, you know, and I say all that to say, you know, the emotional issues from the childhood. So no, it's almost like some of you guys going to get the revelation of some of your issues are definitely stemming from your childhood you know and you know some of you already know that it's stemming from your childhood but you don't know to what extent that it's stimulating stemming from your childhood should i say so you're gonna get that revelation so the moment that he said are you ready so and i was like uh yeah so some of you guys are gonna get that revelation and then some of you guys just a simple the 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 meaning of uh seeing a baby or ba a baby having to see a baby appearing in your dream in other words because what happened was there was a baby in the back seat but there was a baby giving birth to another baby in other words so i was like what so in other words i was embracing the fact that i saw a baby and when i say a baby i'm talking about literally like a newborn baby giving birth to another baby so i was just like good lord but at the same time i was embracing and accepting what i was seeing so i say all that to say you know um as i told you guys before god says source spirit has said basically basically go along with the flow and expect the unexpected so that's a situation that's unexpected of seeing a baby having a baby like a newborn baby having a newborn baby so anyway as the man as the mechanic had delivered and asked me was i ready to see i saw and i was like oh wow i was just I was just in, in acceptance. I had to just accept what I was seeing and I didn't judge. Um, I didn't, it's not like it was a teenager, but it was a baby, again, having a baby, in other words. So I say all that to say that the mechanic had basically, um, after he, had, he, he was trying to give me the baby and I told him, I said, no, 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 don't give me the baby, give the baby to the baby. In other words, like let the baby nurture the other baby in a sense, because it's very important that when moms have baby, you know, that they um, make sure that that's the first thing that a child does when a child is born is basically allowing the mom and baby to connect with each other so that baby can get familiar with that baby's smell the scent it, i mean excuse me so the the baby can get familiar with the mom's the scent the smell and just get familiar with hearing that voice and recognizing you know who who is there to um 
who is who's going to be my nurturer in other words so just hearing those familiar voices allows that baby to become calm when they hear uh certain voices first or come into skin contact with certain people first you know um like the parents in other words so i say all that to say that um so basically the mechanic was trying to give me the baby and i said no no don't give me the baby and it's not that i didn't want the baby oh i love babies like even in my dreams or even in my walk of life i love babies so just to see a baby being born that was beautiful to me but at the same time i knew i didn't want to mess up that process so i told him i said no because naturally when you know even a, a animal thank you spirit even an animal god your spirit was just showing me like if you think about a deer or a cow when they have kids it's like the first thing they do is put those animals right there by their mom or whatever so i knew i didn't want him to hand me the baby although i did want to take the baby Baby. and I started to take it but I was like nope I said I need to I said give the baby to sit the baby down beside the other baby you know so that way can get acquainted with each other but then as I was looking I noticed the newborn baby who was just being born the baby's head was kind of falling between the crack of the seat a little bit I said oh oh you know catch the baby's head and I didn't want to touch the baby because I didn't have my hands clean the mechanic you know he was already touching the baby touching the mom so you know the Thank you, Spirit. So um, the mechanic sent, and the mechanic again is representing like the Holy Spirit or whatever the case may be. So it's almost like the mechanic's hands were clean. I didn't want to touch the baby because I hadn't washed my hands yet to even want to touch the baby. So I, I refused to, and I just told him basically fix the baby's head so the baby's head wouldn't slide down between the crack of the seat. And he did. And, and then I was just sitting there in awe of just like, oh my God, like this is such a beautiful thing. But anyway, then it just got a little weird after that. So I say all that to say, it's like all of a sudden the mom, the baby who had the baby ended up like she needed, it's almost like it was a baby though. It, it was a, not, it, excuse me. It was a baby. It's like I needed to take her somewhere because this lady had came as we were standing there looking at the car and the baby was sitting next to the other baby because this lady came and she basically said well do you um what did she say i think she said about do you need a bottle or a pacifier if you think about a bottle bottle is something to you know uh feed the baby you know to nurture the baby to cause the baby to um get the supplements that they need in order to be able to be healthy and to grow and nutrition if you think about it and then she was um asking something about a pacifier as well too you know the pacifier was just basically something temporarily the baby wasn't crying something temporarily to satisfy the baby in other words uh if the baby should cry to soothe the baby in other words so she had asked if if i needed that in a sense and, and i think i might have told her no at that time at that particular time so what had happened was uh me and the baby who had the baby basically it's almost like she had clothes on and I had her in my hand imagine like a little baby doll in your hand but just kind of dressed up with like a little tutu type dress on so I had her in my hand but I had to sit her down on the ground for a minute I said hold on I, I can't hold you and get this too so I sat her down on the ground for a minute and but she was sitting up and and I got what I needed and then I basically said okay and then I for a moment they almost forgot that she was a baby in a sense so I had to say I said oh I said I'm so sorry I said I almost forgot I said don't worry I said I'm gonna take care of you or whatever the case may be I said I'm gonna nurture you I said, I'm gonna... and so on and so on so I went back to pick her up and I was just you know cuddling her you know like like it wasn't my child, but I was coloring her as if she was my child, in other words. So she was getting the nurturing that she needed, in a sense. So anyway, with all that being said, so we went to the place where the lady who had offered, we went, we ended up at her house for some particular reason. Oh my God, this story is like so long. We ended up at her house for some particular reason. And um, she wanted to retrieve the bottle and the pacifier that um, the lady had offered. So we knocked on the door and, you know, they let us in. And, and I asked her, I said, hey, I said, I said, where's the bottle and the pacifier that you had, um, that you, that you wanted to give me or whatever the case may be? Well, I noticed a single chair that was sitting there. No one was sitting in it, but I noticed the bottle was kind of sitting on the floor. And, um, and, but she was also sitting over in another chair too, feeding her own child, should I say. So, um, I say all that to say that, um, 
that's where the story that particular story had kind of ended there but the bottle and the pacifier was just uh the bottle and a pacifier again was just representing things that you know some of you guys in the situation have kind of allowed there were things in your life that you allowed to um pacify you in a sense like a false sense of pacifying was is what i'm hearing you know things that were false that weren't so in other words the child was the ch so there's two groups of people. One, there's a group of people where the the um where the newborn that's being born, as I said, was representing somebody's inner child. And basically, you know, some of you guys are gonna have that revelation because you know God's source spirit is gonna reveal that to you. In in other words, like where your source of pain and your your hurt and your anger came from. Or I don't even know why I said anger. Like <laughs> I don't know who that message is for, but where your source of pain, anger, your codependency, you're feeling unworthy, you're feeling uh, less than, you're feeling of um, feeling the need to be validated by other people, uh, feeling um, those are all the things I'm hearing. So any of those codependent type issues, even a sense of a false sense of sexual desires is what i'm hearing as well too you know meaning like you know you seeing somebody you thinking that you have a chemistry with them but you know not realizing one or two things either they're pulling on your sexual energy uh and two it's like you some people have had a false sense of uh what's real and what's not real so i say all that to say that there's thank you spirit they associate uh thank you spirit they associate um sleeping with this person or sleeping with that person let's just say over the, all of this is stemming from the childhood and this does not apply to all because some have not had this experience but for some particular reason spirit god soul spirit has me on a specific topic so i say all that to say some of you guys if you found yourself sleeping with this person sleeping with that person and again i'm not judging i'm just here to just deliver the message um uh, sleeping with this person or sleeping with that person has been a false sense of uh it's been a false sense of codependency in other words like you know it's stimulating from your childhood you know maybe your dad wasn't there in your life you know maybe if your dad was there in your life your dad didn't necessarily set a good example for you uh in other words for it's like um you know just showing you ways of what's you know what's in other words your dad wasn't hasn't your dad didn't set the example of showing you or your mom it could be your dad or your mom didn't it set the example of showing you a what of a, a healthy sense of um a healthy sense of nurturing in other words like a healthy sense of nurturing in other words like a dad hugging you a mom hugging you so let's just say if somebody did get those hugs or whatever the case may be you know most likely this is not necessarily pertaining to you but for those people who did not receive those hugs those hugs or said that i love you or whatever the case may be and you know if you had parents if you saw them doing uh specific things and setting um If you saw them doing specific things, you know, if you saw them, let's just say what's come to mind, thank you, Spirit. If you saw them running the streets or if you saw them, let's just, just uh, excuse me, if you saw them running the streets or if you saw them, uh, <laughs> and God's soul Spirit is giving just to, if you saw them running the streets or if you just saw, let's just say hypothetically, if it was either you and your dad out or either you and your mom out and you saw either your mom kind of just, uh, other men flirting with your mom or other men flirting with your dad, you know, those type of, <coughs> excuse me, those type of issues or whatever the case may be, you know, some, some of you guys, hold on one second. Some of you guys may have seen some of those things. And what I'm hearing God or spirit say is you see those things and you thought they were acceptable and you thought that that's the way of how you were supposed to respond thinking because you saw your parent doing it that you too had to do it in other words but thank you spirit but what i am also uh
Yeah, so what Spirit is saying is, is that false sense of reality, in other words. Uh, so it's like your dad or your mom set that false sense of reality of thinking that, oh, this is how you're supposed to do things. You know, uh, if you saw them doing particular things, um, you guys grew up thinking that that was acceptable and it's not, in other words, because what you have to understand is there are situations called generational curses and generational curses are basically when, let's just say, starting with five grandpas back or five grandmas back. If this grandpa did the same thing, that grandpa did the same thing, that grandpa did the same thing. And let's just say your dad did the same thing. And now you're possibly doing the same thing. So I say all that to say, it's like these these cycles, they need to be broken, in other words. So in other words, again, and what I'm hearing, thank you, Spirit. What I'm hearing Spirit say is some of you guys have put those people up on pedestals of thinking that that's how you need to live your life. Like, because you see, you saw them doing certain things, so you feel the need and the expectation to live up to the same uh, false sense of self. So in other words, you're repeating those same cycles even with your, if you have kids, you're repeating those same false sense of cycles even with your own kids. Whether you have kids or whether you don't have kids or whether you have young kids or whether you don't have any kids at all just yet, but you want kids, just make sure that, you know, you work on your emotional issues first. So hopefully you don't repeat the same cycle, you know, going forward with your own kids. So anyway, so the baby having a baby was the representation of those people. Basically, let's just say your dad or your mom, basically not so much as that they were kids having kids because in some incidents, it, you know, a lot of people back then did have kids younger, but what's coming to mind, thank you, spirit. What spirit is bringing to my attention is they were young. They were immature. In other words, you think about a baby, a baby is immature. A baby does not know anything. A baby is a baby is a baby and the baby is only taught what you what you teach a baby so in other words the baby having a baby was the fact of the matter of it's like your parents were babies they didn't know any better they had a false sense of hope because other things that were taught to them from generation to generation hell we can even take it all the way back to slavery if you want to you know um but i say all that to say it's like your parents didn't know they base their decision making off what they knew or what they thought was right at that time thank you spirit what they knew and thought what they what they knew and thought was right at that time but the truth of the matter is it was all false so i say all that to say if you are someone if you're relating to the story and you're realizing that you have been on that path of just sitting back and and I don't even know if some of you had even just sitting back and just watched your own parents. Because I know for me, earlier on, I just sat back and I was just like this. You know, with my mom, my aunts, my uncles. I just watched people's behavior. I just observed them. You know, and maybe for that reason, because I was a loner growing up, that I was able to be observant of other people's behavior. Hell, even people that I didn't know, I observed them too. I observed people around me all the time. So I say all that to say... You know, I just, I just, what's the word? To me, I don't know. It's, it's, it's fascinating in a sense, just to kind of see how people respond to certain things. Cause I sit back and I watch how they respond and how they act and how the choices that they make. And I was like, Ooh, that's, the, and I say to myself, like, mm, not being in judgmental, but just because I know intuitive wise, like, ah, that's not a good decision. Like, Oh, I already know what that's headed, you know, in a sense. So I say all that to say, um, some of you guys are going to get that revelation. The Holy Spirit's going to come in and you're going to get that revelation of where, you know, some of your issues had stemmed from. And then others of you, you know, you got a new project. Something's about to birth off. Okay. Um, and it's almost like some of you feel like it may be like, oh my God, like, cause when he said, are you ready? And I'm like, oh no, I'm not ready. Some of you, it's going to birth off kind of almost like pre you're gonna feel like it's prematurely like oh i'm not ready i'm not ready <laughs> but god saw a spirit say you're ready anyway so i'm sorry that was a long message but i just wanted to make sure i conveyed that to you in the right form 
anyway so oh but the swing the swing see what i mean mercury retrograde the swing i said the scene had switched for one last time so after the whole baby incident giving birth looking for the bottle looking for the pacifier it switched again so this time it was myself and my spouse in a dream we were like driving kind of like as if we was driving and headed back home so on the way home i noticed but it was dark time outside i had noticed it's like i believe he was driving or i was driving anyway so in the dream uh, we was heading home i knew that we was heading home and i looked and i looked over off to the right side and i said oh look i said that's uh snoop dogg's pawn shop that they was talking about in the elevator or whatever the case may be so i saw that on the way home and i'm not hold on i wasn't really sure what the pawn shop really meant i mean if you think about a pawn shop pawn shop usually holds you know things that uh when people need to borrow money they take things to the pawn shop and you know they have to get it back out before i guess a certain time in order for them to be able to keep that item if not the pawn shop keeps it and sells it to somebody else um so anyway so i had to this one okay so it says to see a pawn shop suggests that you might be thinking about giving something up for the sake of something less fulfilling so whatever that means to you i hold on yeah that that's the only um i can't so anyway okay Okay, and then to witness the birth in a dream, thank you, Spirit, to witness a birth in a dream, this basically said to dream of witnessing the birth in a dream, a, a birth of a baby in a dream. If you dream that you were a witness when someone has given birth, it is a good sign. The dream means that you will have a lot of success in a financial sense in the future period. You have seen something give birth. It can also be a symbol of honesty and, uh, honesty and abundance and then this other one says dream of assisting with a birth you know i was kind of telling the man well watch the baby's head or whatever the case may be <laughs> you know um so it's basically saying if you have this dream it means that you will be honored for something in the near future the dream is a symbol of abundance and honor which means that people will respect and admire you you will enjoy in your position and your wealth so there is a very successful period in front of you so keep that in mind whoever that resonates with okay so let's move right on to the next dream <sighs> okay now bear with me this one's kind of long too and we already 43 minutes in so i hope y'all listening anyway um again remember uh the song that came through was uh god is waiting and waiting on the world to change so i say all that to say you know once some of you guys realize where some of your issues are coming from um that they're stemming from your childhood is gonna almost kind of like help set things into place it's gonna be almost it's almost like i'm seeing these think about legos being put into place like the box of you're building blocks that's gonna make a holder picture in other words so anyway now bear with me because this one gets very interesting This one gets very interesting and, and it goes back to the other dreams too where I said, well, God says basically once you know yourself, you basically balance your chakras. Um, it's relating to that. It's relating to the, the bomb, the explosion that I told you that's about to go off, the revelation, whatever it may be, whether it's a physical bomb in some people's presence. I hope not. I hope everybody is safe. Um, or whether it's a situation of actual a revelation going off in your head and, you know, um, yeah, your higher self, God, soul, spirit, the angels, whoever giving you revelation. Anyway, so bear with me because this next one is very important. <sighs> okay, so this one started off in a school. Remember I said anytime we dream, anytime I dream of something, thank you, spirit. Anytime I dream of something related to a school, there's a lesson in that. So with that being said, um, 
feel like this camera kind of moved a little bit. So there's a lesson in, in, in the dream. And I say all that to say this next one came up. We was in a school building and these messages are coming in different groups. So just kind of pay attention. Um, it's very important. This message is very important. So hopefully you will watch it to the end. And I hope you didn't get too sidetracked with the first one, but they all are kind of correlated and related to each other. So please just make sure you listen to it out and don't miss out on this one. So I was in the school building and it showed the scene like I was in like a nursing class in the school, okay? Because I noticed there was like different groups throughout the school. But I, myself, and my sister in this dream was like in, uh, thank you, Spirit. Myself and my sister were in a nursing class. was in this nursing class in the dream. So I was sitting up there, you know, the exam table um, that we have like in doctor's office. So because it was the nursing class, I was sitting up on the exam table and I knew that her and I was gonna take uh, turns um, working on each other, in other words. So in other words, she was taking my vital signs and my blood pressure and doing all that other stuff and I was supposed to do the same for her. So I'm gonna just give you kind of like the little symbolisms as I go along so I don't have to come back so I knew we were supposed to take turns she was again checking my blood pressure and um, vital signs and all that other stuff so that was a representation if you think about what a nurse does a nurse nurtures right so as a nurse nurtures they basically take care of you to make sure you know that everything's okay make sure your blood pressure is not getting too high and basically you know uh, writing down information that that the doctor needs to know before basically the doctor uh comes into the room so you know the important stuff so i say all that to say some of you guys may have found yourself uh abandoning people who really cared about you in a sense abandoning and abandoning people who you really cared about and who they really cared about you is how it kind of came through Cause like, it's like my sister in a dream because it showed me, it showed her, thank you spirit. Cause it showed her taking care of me first. It's like she was nurturing me, but she stopped nurturing me and stopped taking care of me. And, and what happened was all of a sudden it's like, she got called away. Like some people came along and kind of like just sidetracked her in other words. So basically, okay. So because we was in this big open foyer area in the school, but we were still in like the little nursing class, I could see people hanging up out at the balcony above, like saying, hey, yeah, come on, come on, in other words. So they was calling her away, in other words. So she took and left off and she left. And take it how it resonates because some of you, it could be your mom, your sister, your brother, your cousin, spouse, uncle, sister, cousin, brother, you know, somebody who was really close, somebody who you was really close to at one point, you know, that you basically abandoned them or if you, on the other hand, that they basically abandoned you, in other words. So with that being said, the group of people called her away and she left. So at that point, I was thinking to myself like, oh, well, where do I go now? Because she's not here anymore in a sense. So it's almost like I was kind of wandering around the school trying to figure out where I fit in at, in a sense, like uh, not necessarily where I fit in at, but where I wanted to go next. Because, you know, my sister who was there, in other words, like she wasn't, uh, you know, if you think about a sister or brother, there's like supposed to be like your protector, your, you know, your, uh, your, you know, as, thank you, spirit. As you know, as they say, I am my brother's keeper in a sense, kind of like that. So it's almost like because she left, I was kind of like wandering throughout the school, just trying to figure out, okay, where, where am I going to go or, you know, whatever. So anyway, so I was walking throughout the school and I was just, uh, thinking to myself, well, where am I going to go? But I noticed as I was walking throughout the school, there was different groups of people. And for some particular reason, I felt like, uh, you know, I don't want to be a part of these groups in a sense. So some of you have thought that throughout your lifetime, you have been loners and you have not participated in being in big groups or needing 50 people as saying, yeah, that's my friend. That's my friend. You know, you know, some of you guys have been rolling solo for most of your life. I can tell you most definitely myself. I have been, you know, and I say all that to say that, you know, you had a sense of who you are because you rode solo, you know, for those who chose to go off with the groups, they had a false sense of self, meaning like they felt like they needed to fit in with those groups and find out that they didn't fit in with those groups and those groups didn't serve their higher purpose. 
Um, so I say all that to say, let me stay on track, but that's what spirit is telling me. So I say all that to say is I wandered throughout the school looking to where I was going to go next after my sister had left. So, and then I found this one particular, I walked into this one particular classroom and I left my stuff sitting out in the hallway because, thank you spirit, <laughs> spirit just gave me revelation, revelation of that. Cause I, like, there was like a bench out in the hallway, a big bench out in the hallway kind of looked like a shopping mall like an open area but it wasn't it was a school so it was a bench sitting out there and i left my stuff sitting on the bench but i kind of walked into a classroom so a representation of me leaving my stuff like uh my shoes i had like a pair of tennis shoes and a pair of dress shoes or whatever because i took my shoes off and i left them outside and i left like my book bag or something on the bench so i walked into this classroom but spirit just gave me revelation the reason why i left my stuff outside the classroom is because i wasn't meaning to get comfortable there in other words i didn't go into the classroom and take my stuff in there because i wasn't going to get comfortable there so um so once i walked into the classroom i walked in there for a few seconds and then i end up walking back out of the classroom for some particular reason when i was in there i was like ah oh, this is not for me so i walked back out into the hallway the foyer area where the bench and my stuff was so i picked up my stuff and then all of a sudden i heard like this sense of urgency like like we needed to evacuate the building so again this is coming back to the other message that i gave you guys in regards to the whole explosion bomb or something going off or something taking place a sense of urgency so i say all that to say it was like i didn't hear an intercom but i kind of got like somebody was kind of in a sense like somebody was kind of running throughout the hallway talking on the walkie talking like we need to abandon the building you know we need to get out evacuate the building so i grabbed my stuff and got ready to head out but then i noticed all these other people they were like in groups trying to find their way out the school building but myself i was rolling solo so in other words i saw these people they stayed in line they looked like they was kind of social distancing in a group setting i mean not in the group set they was social distancing while in line while trying to evacuate the building but then i thought to myself i was like the people who were leading them out the building i was like if they're leading them shouldn't they know the way out the building excuse me is what i thought to myself so I thought to myself, excuse me, y'all. So I thought to myself, like, they, they're they leading the way, leading them out the building. They should at least know where they're going. So I, as I kept walking and walking, um, and I saw the di different groups in line, I saw people coming this way, and I saw people going that way. Thank you, Spirit. And I was like, well, why are they going two different directions? They don't know where they're going. But anyway, so because I was rolling solo, I was walking and I was making my way out. But need I remind you, I didn't go that way and I didn't go that way because I felt like I was seeing people going this way. That way wasn't a way out. So they coming back this way like they were lost. <coughs> Excuse me. So I walked past this one room. It was the cafeteria. Thank you, Spirit. I walked past this one room and I realized it was the cafeteria. So as I'm walking up on the room, I saw a bright light coming from that room. Like there was lots of windows in there. You know, our cafeteria is lit up. There were lots of windows inside that that room. So I, I was walking up on that room and I could kind of see in the room before I actually got to the room. So as I got to the room door, I walked into the door, the doorway and I saw that it was the cafeteria. And as I walked in there, I noticed people sitting down at the tables. And I thought to myself, I said, why are they sitting down at the tables when everybody else is evacuating the building? But then I also noticed too, like I noticed two people that I had actually went to school with in like real life for some particular reason. And I noticed them in the dream. Very important. So hold on. Please don't click off and please just listen to this message because this is the important part that came up. So I saw two people that um, I went to school with. Some of the other people inside had on military uniforms, okay? But I also noticed straight ahead out my peripheral because I walked in, kind of walked around to where the girl that I knew, well, actually, I was heading, like I was about to head towards the door, but before I left, thank you, Spirit. I was about to head out the door, but before I actually left, I was I, trying to figure out like, why were they sitting there, in other words? So in other words, there was a door wide open. I could see the sun. I could see the parking lot. I could see the cars out in the parking lot. And the door, it's like God had just allowed that door to be wide open for me to just walk right into that door. So I say all that to say that um, where it's, where it's other people in the hallway, the, the lighting was kind of dim. And um, it's like they just kept kind of 
the lighting was very dim they just kept running back and forth forth like it's what i'm hearing spirits say like it's kind of cloudy even though it wasn't cloudy in the hallways but it kind of looked like that in the hallways when there's no not a lot of lighting and um so it's almost like this door that i could see while standing in the cafeteria it was like oh you know like go just walk right on out that door that's all you gotta do just walk right on out that door so god has allowed some of you the opportunity to just walk right on out that door and to get out of what I'm hearing is the matrix mindset that some of you guys have been in that which is aka that hamster wheel um of just repeating the same cycles over and over so he has allowed you a doorway to go out he's giving you a doorway to go out for those of you who he has given that message to who those who's relating with this part of the story so here's the thing the two girls that I knew inside the cafeteria I walked over to one of the girls okay so one of the girls one of the girls actually used to, um, in my walk of life, one of the girl. okay, let me just say this. One of the girls, I actually, sorry. <laughs> I'm just excited because how God gave this to me, I was like, oh my God, like, that's just so beautiful. Like how you just illustrated that whole story to me. Anyway, so one of the girls, let me just tell you, describe her personality. One of the girls, they're very intuitive, okay? They're able to see things. They're able to, uh, they're, they're an observer, observe that, oh God, Mercury retrograde. They are an observer. They sit back, they watch, and they act and they respond when they need to. They are someone who kind of acts like they have it together when they really don't have it together. They're someone who is, um, they hang out in groups or they associate themselves with groups but even so they basically what's the word they hang out in groups but they know who to let me just say they know who whose strings to pull on and whose strings not to pull on in other words because remember they're intuitive so they can see they know so anyway, uh, there's someone who kind of puts themselves up on the pedestal. There's someone who's uh, not appreciative at times, especially when people do things for them. They are someone who is, uh, she was, let's see, she was someone also to, like if you did something for her, it's like, it would never be a thank you, but it would be like a, oh, well, you know, uh, I appreciate it, but you know, that was just too much in other words. So it wasn't just a, oh, thank you. I, I'm greatly appreciative of such and such and such and such. So that's, that's the type of personality that this person is. Not only that, but this person lies. Uh, this person is not truthful at times. This person uh, can kind of take things that don't belong to them. This person can kind of uh, say that they don't, uh, what's the word? This person can kind of say that they They'll make you think that they don't have this or they don't have that. But in all means, that's just to fool you to take advantage of you. In other words, like, let's just say if they owed you $300, they'd be like, oh, well, I can't pay you this week because I got to buy my uh, daughter some some shoes or whatever the case may be. Was that the right example? I got to buy my daughter some shoes, but then you see the daughter with shoes, but then you see all this other extra stuff that they basically wasn't being honest about. So anyway, that's the type of person that this person is. Oh, and then not only that, but they feel entitled to, thank you, spirit. They feel entitled to, and not only they feel entitled to, but they run to you because they know that you have a good sense of heart and they know how your heart is. So in other words, they take advantage of that um they put themselves up on a pedestal even when they shouldn't but they call on you when they need you i don't know who needs to hear that but anyway so that was one person who was sitting down at the table and then another person who was sitting down at the table actually is somebody uh who i knew in school this person was an individual who was uh always had Let's say, always had, let's just say, you remember the classic uh, Reeboks, the, the aerobics Reeboks, the little high tops? 
um let's just say like if a specific color came out you know she would go and get those type of shoes uh her mom did hair so her hair was always done her hair i mean not saying that my hair wasn't done like i'm talking about real life now like in school my hair was done also too but i just didn't go get the bump it curls like when my mom took us to the hairdresser you know we didn't get the the hard curls and all that other stuff um i didn't start getting into the h message h asymmetric hairdos until i was actually working at a hair salon when i was in cosmetology but i say all that to say uh yeah this this person would wear like the hard curls but their hair was always done their clothes was always on point the shoes was always on point and you know they 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 look like they was living life but underneath the surface underneath the surface is almost like they really weren't happy is what spirit is showing me and, and i kind of noticed for a fact because these two individuals that i actually went to school with in real life they really weren't happy in other words but anyway so i say all that to say now i'm back to the dream so i say all that to say but god saw a spirit allowed those two people to show up so that way i understood the type of personalities that i was dealing with so anyway the other people who was in the cafeteria i did not recognize them but then i noticed that the girl the last one who i said always had her hair done you know she had the different color um thank you spirit the different color of um uh classic reeboks the little high top ones you know um whenever they came out um boy ain't this a trip <laughs> absolutely not and i'm gonna tell you something in a minute anyway so i say all that to say that um anyway i say all that to say that uh boy i tell you people are busy in the spiritual realm when i tell you this they are busy anyway so I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Anyway, so back to the story. So the girl, the last one I was talking about, who was on point with her clothes, hair, and all that other stuff, you know, uh, people will probably thought that she had it going on, but then realize that, you know, underneath all of that stuff is what spirit is bringing to me. It's almost like, eh, the personality wasn't too good. So some of you guys may have found yourself dealing with those type of people, you know, whether they was the ones taking advantage of you or whether you were the one taking advantage of other people, in a sense, and take a high resonate pick whichever one resonates with you or if it resonates with you at all anyway so there was a military dude that was sitting next to the last girl that i just described so as i walked over to where she was the military dude kind of stood up so in other words it's almost like i don't know why i'm hearing spirits say almost like like he was almost like like that like it's a demon or kind of using the military as a not the physical military but in a dream like using the military as like he was like the demon like to protect her in a sense like if you think about it people who sell their souls to the devil in other words thank you spirit people who sell their souls to the devil and sell their souls just to um to know certain things like yeah, like the devil will give you temporary satisfaction or temporary uh, gratification. Like, yeah, make me beautiful. I'll make you beautiful. Everybody thinks you're beautiful, but underneath your beauty, you're very nasty, ugly, and, you know, ugly on the inside. And I did that in another video as well, too. Filled with inside is filled with darkness and so on and so on so be mindful of that i don't know who needs to hear that or where this is coming from but anyway so the military dude stood up stood up when i walked over there to where she was she stood up but he also stood up as it's almost like he was her bodyguard in a sense so i walked over there to her and i guess not necessarily to say hi but it's almost like i was just trying to figure out like why they was there in the cafeteria just sitting there and everybody else was trying to evacuate the building so the sense that i had gotten the reason why they were there in the cafeteria was because they're the force if you think about the military especially the marine corps the marines go in there first usually um with a situation of uh going in to wreak havoc or you know break up some of the 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 monopoly or break up some of the uh kind of restore a little bit of order in a sense so they was there on they would they thank you spirit so it was like they were almost like the what do you call them 
almost like the navy seal well i think the navy seals are the marine corps something like that anyway so they were going to go in there so in other words they were going to wreak havoc on the school is what i was getting they were just waiting for their orders because remember i said that he was kind of almost like a demon or whatever the case may be but protecting her so in a sense but i wasn't afraid even when i was around these people but anyway i say all that to say everybody was sitting there and waiting for their orders so as i was talking to her she actually said something to me, but she had her hand up on his shoulder like this, standing like this. And she was like, so, Sonia, she was like, um, uh, where did she, she say, were you ever a hater? She had asked me, was I ever a hater? Yeah. She had asked me, was I ever a hater? And I looked at her, I was like, a hater? I was like, girl, no. I said, what I need to hate on you for? And then, um... I said, no. I said, remember, I said, when we was in school, you know, you used to always have your hair nice or, you know, uh, uh, I mean, because there was times when my hair wasn't done or when I didn't go to the, that's not the point. But the point of the matter is there are times I slick my hair back a lot, you know, because I, I, I don't know, for some particular reason, I like my hair out of my face. But I say all that to say, you know, uh, even when I went and got my hair done at the hairdresser, I would always do it in a style to where... I didn't really have it down in my face by my eye and all that other stuff. But anyway, so her hair was always nice because, like I said, it's always an asymmetric. One of the eyes was covered and the hard curls and so on and so on. But it was short and shaved off in the backside. Anyway, so I told her, I said, girl, no. I said, no, I ain't never... I never hated on you. I said, anytime you came to school and your hair was done nicely, even though we were in cosmetology class together... Um, you know, I said, no. I said, I've always gave you a compliment. Oh, girl, I like your hair. Or whatever the case may be. Or, oh, girl, I was like, I like those shoes. You know, and then, and she was like, she looked at me and I was like, no. I said, what do I need to hate on you for? And she was like, she was like, you're right, you're right. She was like, you, you did. You did used to do those things. So I say all that to say, for those of you who have been haters, and I say that in the most humbling way as possible i'm just telling you what was given to me so for those of you who have had anger and hatred towards other people for whatever reasons for whatever reasons for whatever reasons because i'm hearing god's source spirit saying it's for whatever reasons it's not about hair it's not about shoes but that's just how it came to me in a dream so for your situation uh or someone close to you if this is not resonating with you if somebody has been a hater in some sort of way let's just say that the reinforcement is about to come in you know i don't know if this is going to be the re revelation that some of you guys get which is that force of energy that i told you that i felt that it felt like a bomb had went off whether it's physically or whether it's mentally and emotionally but i just i'm here to tell you i'm not done with the dream yet so rather than me walking out that door that god saw spirit was telling me i'm giving you a way out you can you can go out this door right now so some of you, God has been telling you that here, here's your opportunity to leave. Here, here's your opportunity to just go. Go, go, go. Because you don't fit in with these other people. Here's your opportunity to leave. And if some of you have not chose to leave just yet, that's fine too. And I'm going to tell you why. Because it's like, because I didn't choose to walk out that door and to the parking lot where the cars was the sun was shining i was like this all this could be over with i could wake up but i said to myself no wait i wanted to see what was going to happen to the rest of the people the people who were following in groups so i made my way after talking to her i made my way back out into the hallway and i went out the door and i turned right so i turned out right and i saw somebody else in the dream so and as i saw somebody else in the dream i ran across my mom in the dream so let me let me tell you where we're going with this i saw my mom in a dream and i was like mom i said we need to get out the building and i was like because they're calling for evacuation and she was like well where's your sister and i was like i don't know i called for her because i did i didn't tell you guys this but i had called for her and i was yelling for her and i was calling her name like you know trying to let her know come on we need to go we need to go but she never responded in a sense so god saw a spirit was like okay what you gonna do you're gonna stand here you're gonna wait on them or you're gonna save yourself so I say all that to say, I saw my mom and I told her, I said, we need to evacuate. We need to leave. And she said, where's your sister? I said, I don't know. I called her out and I been looking for, not necessarily going room to room looking for her, but in a sense of looking for her. And I tell you this, y'all, let me just give you this quick story that is true. So on 9-11, myself and my mom went looking for my sister 
<laughs> when she was working down at the Pentagon, should I say, when that explosion went off. Then we running towards the, the flames, the building, looking for someone who we love while everybody else was trying to get away from the building. Well, let me say this. Luckily, at that time, and sometimes, thank you, Spirit. I don't even know where I was going with this, but I see why. Sometimes God is trying to offer you guys a way out. Sometimes some of you guys may go kicking, fighting, and screaming. You don't want to change. You don't want to budge. You don't want to uh, listen, should I say. But just know when God is isolating you, because I had to learn this too, that it's for your own protection. In other words, when he's trying to separate you from a group, it's for a reason. It's for your protection. And I say that to say, luckily, my sister was not at the Pentagon on that specific day. We thought she was. The phone lines was down. We couldn't get a hold of her. But we found out later on that she was not at the Pentagon. She was actually training somewhere else. Uh, she was training somewhere else, uh, you know, that was somewhere else not too far away, but at another location. So thank God she wasn't there. But I say all that to say, um, this is how, and, and thank you, Spirit. Oh my God, I didn't even see where this was going because I didn't even know where the conversation was going. I actually want to cry, to be honest with you. Like, oh my God, like my eyes are like really tearing up. Some of you guys, I hope you guys are just heeding the warning because I say all that to say I had people that I knew on 9-11 who was in that building. We had two of our parents who was actually in that building on 9-11. These were people who used to bring their kids to our child care center. These were people who brought their kids to our child care center. <clears throat> And I say all that to say, one of the parents, her child was still at our center and she actually um, lost her life. And I'm not here to scare anybody, but I didn't even know that this topic was going to come up. But God's Lord Spirit is leading me in that direction because I guess he wants you to know that this is serious. Not to the point that I'm telling you to be fearful, but it's just to be mindful and to be as a warning. So I say all that to say. We had two parents in that building. Actually, I knew two, four, actually knew five people in that building. At the time, I believe my brother-in-law was in that building at the time, but I don't think he was, or he wasn't on that side of the building when it happened. But luckily my sister wasn't there at the time. She was at a training. So I'm telling you the situation where God saves people from going through certain situations. So he saved her. She wasn't there that day. And need I remind you, my husband at the time, he had gotten fired from the Pentagon because the same side where another young lady who was also, um, whose child also attended our child care, she, um, she got badly injured. She was injured so bad to the point that she was burnt so bad. And I had to watch her kind of like, you know, we would go up to, um, uh, what is the hospital up in DC? Um, way up there in DC, uh, for the mil the military hospital. Um, I forgot the name of it, but Walter Reed's, I think. Was it Walter Reed? Yeah, I think Walter Reed Hospital. You know, we would go up there and visit her, and I was like, oh my god, like I could just literally i could just visiting her is just like oh my god i was just so thankful that she was alive you know that she had at least made it she was on the same side that the plane had hit because she was like a computer techie or whatever and need i remind you my husband would have been on that same exact side if he had not got fired a week before it was either a week before or two weeks before so sometimes when god allows you a situation out of a situation it's for your protection if he had a still been there, if he had a still protest, if he had a sat there and said, you know what, I'm not going to settle for being fired. I'm going to I'm going to contest that he would have possibly been in that building and whether he would have still been here or not. I don't know. But the point that I'm trying to make is sometimes when God is asking you to do something, 
and he was removing you from a situation, you got to learn how to be obedient because it's for your protection. I don't know who needs to hear that. And I'm sorry, y'all, but I wasn't expecting to go there. But I just wanted to let you know. But like I said, you know, my sister was in training that day. So she was saved from being there. My spouse got fired from his company that he was working with at the Pentagon. That was for his protection. That was for my sister's protection. The two parents that we knew that their child attended our child care center, you know, one, again, she lost her life, you know, may her soul rest in peace. And the other one, you know, she was badly injured, should I say. But thank God she was able to recover. But still, just, I mean, think about just the psychological damage that you have to deal with after a situation of that. Just think about the trauma that it causes, like, you know, constantly always looking over your shoulder, hearing a, a car backfire, you know, just things like that. You know, and I believe my brother-in-law was at the Pentagon at that time. Was he at the Pentagon? Was he at Crystal City? One of the two. I don't think he was actually in. I think he kind of networked back and forth, but he wasn't in the building as well, too. So I was thankful for that as well, too. But I say all that to say, and everyone else who lost their lives, may their soul rest in peace. But I say all that to say, um, you know, you have to know that some things are for your protection. But let me finish this message because I don't want to um, lose you guys. But anyway, I saw my mom and I told her, I said, yeah, I said, I couldn't find her. I called out for her. I yelled for her. And I don't know where she is. And that's the first thing I thought about when I woke up from the dream, 9-11, when we went chasing after my sister down at the Pentagon, making sure she was okay. But I say all that to say, you know, uh, this was a situation of my mom was choosing to stay into the building to try to figure out where her other child was. And I was making a conscious decision of leaving because I knew either I could stay in this building and it, I can go down with it for whatever was about to come or I can get out of the building. So I chose to <clears throat> I chose to even leave my mom. So some of you guys may find yourself in a situation that you may have to leave some people behind, you know, whether it's a co-worker, boss, I don't know, aunt, cousin, sister, brother, whoever, you know, in order to save yourself. Because we in a day and time, it's no more self-sacrificing, sacrificing yourself for other people. Now, this is self-sacrificing is different from, I don't want you guys to think, oh, well, I'm not going to do this and do that because because that's me sacrificing myself now god does have us having uh are we some of us are are being put in certain situations because we have obligations commitments and soul contracts with certain people but at the same time that's different and when i say that i'm saying talking about like family dynamics in other words so i say all that to say that you know if you find yourself in a situation of having to make a choice of whether somebody that you love you know of letting them make their choice that they feel is best for them and, you know, you making the choice that's best for you and accepting it is what it is. And I chose to leave my mom and I walked away and I saw this other group that was looked like they was heading. So I just kind of walked behind them. Not so much. They were kind of walking, but they wasn't walking in a single file line like all of the other groups were. They was just kind of walking together in a sense. So I chose to kind of follow behind them to try to work my way out of this building. Need I remind you, because it just seemed like nobody knew how to get out this building. But this one last group after I saw my mom and after I saw her and I saw this one last group that walked past. So I chose to kind of trolley behind them or whatever. And as I trolley behind them, I noticed that we was coming up on some clear glass doors that I can see the sun like I could see again. So I say all that to say, but just as we was getting closer, I noticed at a distance there were people standing in the foyer areas near the front area and they was kind of like having a conversation. So I noticed one girl who was standing there having a conversation. Excuse me. She was standing there having a conversation with the guy. It's like she saw us. She ran from where he was. There was a plug. I mean, I was just observing everything. There was a plug hanging out of her locker and she ran over to her locker with this boom box and she plugged it in. Um, and she sat it down. And the first thing I thought to myself was she sat it down. And I felt like it was like some sort of detonator that was about to go off. Like when she saw us, it was almost like, okay, it's go time now to de de des desic oh God, Mercury retrograde <laughs> to, uh, designate. Oh my God. Am I saying that right? Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. De designate, designate, <laughs> whatever. So it's almost like she had 
when she was told to see, I guess, like the group coming to go and detonate, like, I guess it's a countdown at that point, in other words, because like start the clock, in other words. So once we was up near the foyer area, the front of the window, and I could see the windows, I knew that, you know, I, my goal was to just make it out the door. But at that point, the dream just pretty much ended. So I say all that to say that um, some of you guys are going to find yourself being faced with, you're going to either choose to keep staying on that hamster wheel and keep choosing to repeat those same old cycles, or there's going to be that force of the military people who were sitting in the cafeteria that's going to kind of go sweeping throughout the school, in other words. And I kind of got the feeling like they were going to kind of be there to taunt people. So not necessarily so much to save and help people but to taunt people in whatever way shape or form that it is they was just waiting for their orders that's the only reason why they were sitting down and um you know just watching and observing kind of giving people enough time so i think not think but once she designated that uh boom box not designated once she plugged in the boom box it was meant to start the clock time so i believe some of you guys have already been told Some of you guys have already been told the clock is ticking, that time is about to run out. So it's your choice. It's your choice. It's your choice. But was this it? So yeah, either some of you can keep following those same uh, groups that were wandering throughout the school and the people who were guiding them didn't absolutely know where they were going or you know, like I said, they were all in single file lines, but then the group that I followed out because I chose to stay just to see what the outcome was going to be to kind of like get almost to get you guys this message because I could have walked out the door and you wouldn't even have got this message and I would have been in a parking lot. But for some particular reason, I was meant to go up to uh, just go back in to see what the outcome was going to be, you know, for, for some people not choosing to uh, follow basically their intuition or listen to their higher self speaking to them, God, soul, spirit, the angels, you know, um, take it how it resonates. But anyway, that was the end of that message. And then the last message, I'm sorry, and that one came through on And the funny thing about it was when I saw her plug up the boom box and when I wrote it down, I was like, boom box. And I just said in another, the other prophetic message that I heard like some sort of detonator going off, like some sort of boom. But anyway, but the, usually the boom box usually symbolizes a message coming through. So what exactly is it going to be? I don't know. Hopefully it's not something catastrophic, but. With that being said, it's up to you, to you guys from this day forward. Listen to the messages. Just be quick to listen and slow to speak. Listen to what people are saying. Really listen to what they're saying. If you're listening to a radio, if you're watching a movie, if you're reading something, really listen to what's being said because sometimes God saw a spirit your guardian angels, your archangels, you know, your higher self, your spirit guides. And your ancestors, uh, sometimes they all can give you messages that are for your higher good. So it's up to you to pay attention. But I really believe that some of you higher self is really leading you right now. And it's up to you to really try to quiet the monkey mind is what I'm hearing and really listen. Anyway. So, yeah. But like I said, radio usually symbolizes something that's coming through, a message. When you think about um, when people are in wars or whatever, they use the radios as uh, a way to know what's going on in the world. Like, you know, how with, back when they had, I guess, the Vietnam Wars and you heard them televising over the radio, you know, like saying, yeah, don't go to specific areas. Or, you know, you could be getting messages from the higher realms, your higher self or whoever it may be. But the key is just to listen and pay attention. The last dream that came through today, this morning. The military school came through on the 29th. Anyway, so this morning's dream was I saw that some like a man was in the mirror shaving in a sense. Like he was just shaving around here in a sense. So that just lets me know like. 
I'm getting the feeling of what I'm hearing spirit say is like almost like a cleaning of the mouth. Cause I told you I did another drink too. Uh, I, I gave another message where I said I had like a raw egg in my mouth, but it knew it had some blood on it, but I spit it out. And I was just like, uh, and it was almost like a cleansing of the mouth in a sense. So I say all that to say this man was standing in the mirror and he was shaving his beard. So for <clears throat> the message that I got, some of you guys really need to look in that mirror and do some mirror work and really ask yourself. This is what spirit was giving me. Look in that mirror and really ask yourself, are you standing up and are you living to your higher potentials? Are you, have you, should I say, thank you spirit, have you, have you gotten as far as you think that you can get in life how far you have gotten in life thank you spirit has it served its purpose really look deep into that mirror and ask yourself it's called mirror work this is me saying this now this is called mirror work I had to face myself and I had to look at myself in the mirror and I had to sit there with my face crying and all some years ago and accept the fact that there was things in my life that I knew I needed to change. There was things in my life that I knew I didn't like how I was responding. There was things in my life that I didn't like how people were treating me. There were things in my life how I, I felt like I was settling for less when I knew I deserved more. Um, I, f I had to I had to face that I had to face all of that I had to face jealousy I had to face um, you know codependency because let's be honest sometimes with girls when their dads aren't in their life we're looking for someone in our relationship to kind of fill that void of our dads so yes that was my situation because my dad wasn't there so I say all that to say that, you know, we get into these relationships that are unhealthy. We hang around on people for unhealthy reasons, whether it's subconscious or unconscious. You know, we, we do things not realizing that there's a deep rooted issue of why we're doing it. So I say all that to say, <coughs> excuse me, I say all that to say when myself, and this is me not talking about the dream now. This is me talking about when me and my spouse had separated, should I say. I basically said to myself, I was like, you know what? You know, because so many people run out here and they jump in another relationship. They jump in rebound relationships. They jump in relationships looking for someone to pacify them. That's what a bottle and the pacifier was coming in. Even though they was looking for somebody to nurture them, somebody to give them life in a sense. Like, you know, and sometimes you have to give ourselves life. Sometimes it's not up to anybody else to give it to us. We were in day and times when we was in the age of Pisces. As we transition into the age of Aquarius, it's no more of that. You have to learn how to pacify and build your own self up. It's no more being codependent on, you know, like, go, Sonia. Like, girl, you can do this. You can do this. Yay, Sonia. Go, girl, go, 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 go. No, you got to be your own cheerleader. I had to be my own cheerleader. You know, I accomplished things. Uh, a lot more things being separated than I have really been being together, should I say. And I'm proud of myself for that. But guess what? I didn't have anybody around patting me on the back and saying congratulations. None whatsoever. But I say all that to say I had to congratulate myself. I had to tell myself I was proud of myself. I went out here and rewarded myself for my hard work. You know, so I say all that to say, if anybody is in your life trying to degrade you, talk about you, and they don't know you deep down inside and they don't know what moves that you are making. <clears throat> it's almost like I'm hearing say, kiss my ass in a sense. <laughs> what I'm hearing spirit say, spirit has this little sense. But anyway, because they don't know your walk. They don't know your walk. They don't know your struggle. They don't know what you had to fix. They don't know what you had to go through. And nor do I know what anybody else had to go through. All I know is what I had to go through. So I say all that to say, you got to show up and show up for yourself. Congratulate yourself. 
Pat yourself on the back. Give yourself those hugs. Give yourself that love. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps is what I'm hearing. You know, there was plenty of days that I cried, should I say? I cried myself to sleep because I realized that I needed to nurture myself because not only was my dad not there, but now I'm separated from my spouse, should I say? And that was like, that was so totally unexpected. But there were plenty of nights that I sat there and I hugged myself and I was like, you know what, Sonia? You know, you are lovable, you know? So I say all that to say that sometimes we got to speak to ourselves. Sometimes we have to give ourselves hug. And yes, I'm not telling you to do something that I did not have to do, but I had to do it all. I had to cry myself asleep while hugging myself and telling myself it's almost like I was being my own parent giving myself what it is that I did not get from my parents should I say you know my mom she did the best that she could do with not a father being around I command my mother my mother did a lot I'm actually proud of her you know um but there was one thing that I could say that that kind of lacked and I think that's just their generation you know that sometimes it was hard for them to give hugs and give you know, they showed their way of love is by giving material things in a sense that like that was my mom. We always kind of like had new stuff or whatever. So for me, when I see old stuff, I'm just like, mm, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, and again, it's no judgment. It's just that that's just how I am. So I say all that to say that that's just been my upbringing. You know, I'm really particular about where I sit at, what I sit on. I don't like cloth seats. I only like leather seats. So if I have to sit on something that's cloth, I'm going to pick up a pamphlet if I'm inside of a doctor's office and open it up and sit on it you know that's just to the extent that it is but you know some of you may say it's bougie but that was just that was just my mom providing us with nice things and taking us places but I say all that to say that you know because my uh you know she she did her best you know while acting and and modeling at the same time and you know being in movies you know I was just I was really proud of her you know when I look back on it but there was times that I actually kind of pointed the finger at her but I had to tell myself you know what she did the best that she can do and I know we have a habit of pointing the finger at the person or trying to hurt the person who is close to us we we have a habit of doing that we hurt the person that is close to us the person that is there for us the person that is feeding us the person that gives us the roof over the head but then yet sometimes with dads we tend to give them like a break in a sense and they're the ones that's not even there so i say all that to say i had to change my mindset it was like wait a minute you know what I'm not saying that i put him up on a pedestal but it got to a point i was like you know my mom has done this she's done that she did the best that she could do she lost her mom at a young age so i say all that to say you know and uh her uh her dad wasn't really uh that i know of so as I became older, you know, he was a little standoffish too, you know, but I had to tell my granddad, may his soul rest in peace. I love him. I, I, let me tell you a quick story. So I say all that to say that my granddad was the type of person that he was like hands off. So I realized that that's kind of like how their kids kind of became a little hands off, I guess, especially after their mom had, you know, uh, had passed away. Cause I never got the opportunity to see my grandma. But anyway, I say all that to say, uh when i was pregnant with my daughter uh we went to visit him because we would normally always go there every year between georgia and florida to visit or whatever because i'm from georgia for those who don't know i am a georgia peach so uh take a moment and do housewives of atlanta <laughs> anyway so with that being said with that being said um i was able to i was the only one out of all of his grandkids and even his kids that were able to get him up out of Georgia, should I say, to even come up, you know, along the East Coast, should I say, and to visit. So for me to even do that much, I was very honored. And I think there was a little bit of hateration involved because I guess the kids was just like, well, wait a minute, I asked you to come up here and you didn't want to come, but why you come when she tell you to come? So basically I was able to get my granddad to come up here and to do something totally different than what he had ever done or seen before. You know, he was so used to being in between Georgia or Atlanta or Savannah, Georgia, uh, or maybe Jacksonville, but that's it, you know, but him coming up here was just something totally, it was a totally different experience for him. And I was proud and I was honored that he actually listened to me enough and found me 
my words valuable enough because the first thing you said was well you're going to be up there and i said yeah i said i'm not going to be at the house but i'm going to be at my house but i'm going to see you because he would come up to the day well he actually stayed with my mom and he she would bring him up to the daycare every single day so he would just kind of sit there at one of the desks up in the lobby area just kind of watch the the ladies or the moms come in and out i was like <laughs> typical man for you anyway but i guess he was just observant to taking in this different environment from what he was used to so i was honored of that just for the fact that he again he even listened to me that he even listened to what i had to say and that he was able actually to experience that you know before passing on or whatever the case may be love your granddad anyway so with all that being said i say i say all that to say that um some of you guys may need to start picking up that mirror and looking at yourself and ask yourself are you happy with the life that you have created literally asking yourself that and literally asking yourself have i been too hard on a parent who had tried to do their very best to raise me have i honored them in a way of just providing and taking care of me thank you spirit because we have this opportunity to fix things now because none of us are guaranteed what's to come. I just know that this month, October, something's coming. I don't know what it is, but I just know. But I say all that to say it's time to pick up that mirror, y'all. Pick up that mirror if you so choose to. It's your choice. But anyway, on that note, it is 135. I didn't even mean to make it that long. But I hope you guys watch this to the end so that you can get all the information that was needed. And those were the prophetic messages that I received those other few days that I was off. So I hope you guys um, stay blessed, stay sweet, stay beautiful. And what I'm hearing is be thankful for each day. Because I know when I get up in the mornings... I give God gratitude for allowing me to wake up to see another day and to even get up out of my bed because I know that there's somebody somewhere who did not wake up to see another day at all, period. So with that being said, I wish you all much love, much light until the next prophetic message. Uh, really quick, I know I didn't do Sonya Time with B, but I don't know if anybody's watching, but nevertheless, I'm not done yet. But God saw a spirit had me to put the Reiki uh, sample session on hold for a minute. So what I'm going to actually do is for right now is I'm going to skip over to the chakra system. So that way you guys can kind of pinpoint kind of like those little areas of what I'm talking about when I'm saying the chakra system and how it's related to the organs and different body parts and how it functions, how it functions and how it how it functions as well as how it affects you in your day to day life. Just remember one thing is what I'm hearing Spirit say, because how you function right now is basically an end result of, is resulting from your childhood. So the way that you respond and act, those things are resulting from your childhood. Anyway, y'all, much love, much light. I say namaste and peace and blessings. Bye. Stay safe.